Linear models can do a tremendous amount for us, and there are lots of problems we can solve with linear models. And, and by linear, I mean that we can capture with some line or some sheet of paper or hyperplane is a term that you might see. But there are lots of phenomena out there that we really can't capture with a linear model. And instead, we need to reach for a nonlinear model. And, and all that I mean by that is that instead of having a straight line, we might have one that has some curve to it. So we might follow the, the line here, but then curve upwards or something along these lines. There are lots of different ways to solve nonlinear regression kinds of problems. Deep neural networks is one way to uh, approach this. And the, the fundamental idea here is that we're going to construct a very simple nonlinear computing element, uh, and that will be able to do certain kinds of things. But then once we start putting these nonlinear computing elements together, we can actually represent uh, pretty arbitrary nonlinear functions. So let's take a look at uh, such an element. So here, before we had just one x0 as input, now we have an arbitrary number of inputs here. So there's their index from 0 to n0 minus 1. So n0 refers to how many inputs we have. The bias term here, that is that offset term. We had a w1 uh, beforehand. The first half of our neuron, it does exactly what we talked about before, where we have some sort of a weighted sum of all of the inputs. But what we're adding is some nonlinearity on top of this. And I'll, we'll talk through the mathematics of that. As far as notation goes, uh, just a couple of other things. First, this zero here just refers to layer zero, which is our inputs. And layer one, I'm indexing here with a, a, a one up here. So let's, let's throw in a few more details here as far as notation goes. Uh, so before we had a w0 and a w1, but now that we have an arbitrary number of inputs and potentially an arbitrary number of layers, uh, the notation gets a little bit more complicated. So uh, what, what I mean by this, this w0,0 means that we are connecting input 0 to unit neuron 0 in layer 1. So zero comma zero. Uh, this connection here, this is this this connection comes from input one to unit zero on down the line. And uh, what I mean by this notation is that we're going to take the product of x zero and and w zero zero, and add that to the product of these two to and on down the line to down to the product of of these two here. So, so this is very much what we uh, saw before. So here's uh, the mathematics of that. Uh, here we're indexing over all of the inputs that are coming in. And, and uh, each input is multiplied by its corresponding, we call it a weight, hence the W that we have here. You can also think of this as a gain. Those are all summed together. And then we also have that bias term that is akin to that w1 that we have in the previous model. So all of these are added up, and the notation that I have here for that weighted sum is n0 in layer 1, so unit 0 in layer 1. And then the output of this neuron is then some sort of a nonlinear function of that n0 that we just computed. And this can actually be one of many different things. And one that we used very early on in the neural nets community is something called the logistic function, or you'll see the term sigmoid, and its shape looks like this. So this is the output along the, the vertical axis here as a function of the net input, or the, the n0. Uh, the, this particular function happens to be 1 over 1 plus e to the minus n. Uh, and it has it has this shape. So right in this area here, where n0 is near 0, it has the, the highest slope. And it's relatively constant. But as n0 gets bigger and bigger, we start to asymptote. And as we approach infinity on the right-hand side, we approach 1 very quickly. And, and this is a symmetric function in the sense that as, as n0 becomes more and more negative, uh, we also asymptote toward zero. 
and we reach zero as n zero approaches negative infinity. Um, but as you can see, by the time we hit negative four or even negative six, we're effectively at zero. There are many other kinds of choices for this nonlinear function. This happens to be really convenient when we want to have an output that is in the range of zero to one. Uh, so we're going to be computing some logic functions here in a moment. And, and so zero to one is a, a, a nice choice there. Um, but one can also interpret this output as a probability. And, and that turns out to be really useful when we're say doing categorization, when we're looking at a picture and we think we see a cat, but maybe we're not so sure. And we wanna be able to capture that ambiguity. So here are all the pieces that go into our individual uh, computing element. And in the next few videos, we're going to play a little bit with what these computing elements can do.